Hey folks, I'm Heidi from Hands Occupied, and in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to knit the diamond brocade stitch. This is a really nice beginner-friendly stitch pattern that just uses knits and purls. Let's get started. Right here, you're looking at a stitch called the diamond brocade stitch in knitting. Um, this is kind of a well-known stitch. Um, it's another that I first discovered in the Barbara Walker series of knitting stitch treasuries. Um, it's got a clear right and wrong side. Um, it's nice and beginner friendly because it only uses knits and purls to work. So let's begin. Right here, I have cast on a multiple of eight stitches plus one. So what that means is to work this stitch, you need to work a multiple of eight stitches. So in my case, I did eight times two, which is 16 stitches, okay? Um, and then we need to add one more stitch to get this pretty tessellating pattern to work out. So I've cast on 17 stitches, again, because eight times two is 16, plus one is 17. So the first row of this eight row repeat diamond brocade stitch is a right side row. So I'm going to begin by inserting my needle into that first stitch, knit wise with my yarn and back because I'm ready to knit the first four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And now we're going to purl one and knit seven. Purl one, one, two, knit three, knit four, five, six and seven. And now if you have more stitches than I do on uh, your row, you'll repeat that purl one and knit seven until you get to the last five stitches of the row, which you'll end by doing a purl one and knit four. Now turning to the wrong side of our work for row two, we're gonna bring our working yarn to the front in my case for my continental style knitting and we're gonna start by purling three. And now the repeat for the row is knit one, purl one, knit one, purl five. So I'm gonna do that next. All right, so the repeat for this row is knit one, purl one, knit one, purl five. And now we're going to repeat that again. But if it's the last repeat of the row, like it is in my case for demonstration, we're going to end with a purl three instead of a purl five. So knit one, purl one, knit one, and then there's only three stitches left. So we purl three. Yay. Now for row three on the right side of our work. And at this point you can start looking for what's called purl bumps. If you're a beginner knitter or a newer knitter, these bumps that make the diamond stand out against the stockinette background, those are called purl bumps. So that's what I mean when I say that. <laughs> so now you can start looking out for those purl bumps to see them starting to form the pattern correctly or incorrectly if you made a mistake, which is no biggie. You can always tear back and knit again. So for row three, we're going to knit two to start. and the repeat across the row will be purl one, knit three. Purl one, knit three. Purl one, knit three. And the last repeat will be purl one, ending knit two. And while we're still on this right side, you can really see those purl bumps starting to form the pattern. I'll do a close up here. There's a little V forming here. And that will get more and more clear. So row four, which at the end of row four will be halfway done. We're gonna purl one 
and then we're going to knit one, purl five. knit one, purl one. And now we'll repeat that. Knit one, purl five. And then knit one, purl one. So this repeat ends nice and even at the end of our row. Turning to the right side for row five. We're going to start with a purl stitch. Even though it's the right side. So purl one, knit seven. And then you'll repeat that purl one, knit seven, all the way across to the last stitch. Need some more yarn. There we go. Purl one, knit seven. And then the very last stitch will be a purl one. And the great thing about this, once again, you can really see the V's now that we've got a whole chevron worked, a whole zigzag in those first five rows. Now, row six, seven, and eight are repeats of rows we've already done, which is nice. So row six is going to be a repeat of row four. Purl one, and then the repeat is knit one, purl five. Knit one, purl one. Knit one, purl five. Knit one, purl one. That's row six, which is a repeat of row four. Very confusing, I know. But just take note of the confusing parts and then you don't fall and trip as often, <laughs> but we all still do because that's knitting. All right, two rows left, guys. So for row seven, we are going to repeat row three. So we start with a knit two, and now the repeat is purl one, knit three, Purl one, knit three. Purl one, knit three. Purl one. And then we end that last repeat, knit two. And now we are in the final home stretch, row eight, the last row of this repeat where our pattern will really come together. And we'll repeat row two. So we'll purl three. And now we knit one, purl one, knit one, purl five. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl five. Knit one, purl one, knit one, and then we end at purl three. Cool. So now you can clearly see two little diamonds in a row. And as you repeat rows one through eight over and over again, they form this sort of beautiful repeating pattern. Cool, huh? And so here, obviously, I worked more than 17 stitches. Again, we're working with a multiple of eight stitches plus one. And so you can do 17 or 25. Um, just bust out those eight times tables and it's really easy to figure out. Just remember to add one more stitch to your multiple of eight for the cast on. And this is what the wrong side looks like. Um, and this swatch has been uh, wet blocked lightly. Um, and you can see the, the pretty ridges of the diamond brocade stitch on the back. And then on the front, on the right side, you can see this beautiful kind of royalty vibe diamond brocade stitch pattern. 
And that was how to work the Diamond Brocade stitch. This lovely, versatile, and beginner-friendly stitch is right at home in a lot of sweater knitting patterns, blanket patterns, cowls. It's just a really great way to incorporate, text incorporate texture into your work. If you have other ideas for places that this stitch would look beautiful in your knitting, go ahead and let us know in the comments. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for even more new knitting tutorials. I've been Heidi, thank you for watching.